All right, so the Fourier transform can convert the noisy signal. You can do analyze the noisy signal. It will change a sign and a cosine, or a sign and a cos. It will change that frequency and see how does that compare with a low frequency? How does it compare with a slightly higher frequency? How does it compare with each frequency block, uh, point up, up until your sample frequency? And it will uh, give you an indication of what components cons is your noisy signal consisting of. So you can see it's a big 2 and a small 50. So back to our sine wave. Let's just make this sine, this noise a little bit bigger. Let's just make, at the moment it's 1. Let's just make it uh, 10. I'm just making the 50 hertz a little bit bigger. Also what I've done is, remember this was 100 values. Let's just make this a little bit bigger to get a bigger waveform sample. So 2 to the power 10. We'll say 2 to the power 10 will be 1024. So we make this 1024. Now, in lab, you can make this just 1000 or 500. Um, it will kind of forgive you. But in other processes, you remember you have to store these 1000 values or 100 values. You have to store it in memory spots. And this is why you normally take 2 to the power value, you know, a binary value <coughs> to do this with. So if I run it now, we're going to wait a while now. We can see there is our noisy signal. So we know we've got the, the low frequency component and the 50 hertz high frequency component. We've got 5,000 of them. I've also calibrated this one in the meantime. Let's just take the calibration off first. So you know what's happening here. So normally your process would look like this. There's 1,024 values stored. 1,024 values stored. But you have to remember if you want this in time, actually in seconds, each value, the distance between the values are 5 nanoseconds, or milliseconds, I mean, which is 1 over Fa. So normally in the maths, as I said, I'm not going to go into the maths a lot, but if you want to calibrate this axis, you have to say divide by Fa. We know our sample frequency is 200. That's how we got to the 5 uh, milliseconds. So if you just say 1 divided by 200, whatever your sample frequency is, can you see there? We're just going to multiply the x-axis with that. Properties. Multiply with 0 0.005. And now it's in seconds. So you can see 1024 values at that speed of recording. So Remember, every 5 milliseconds, it's putting in one value. In this, to fill up all 1024, it's going to take you a little bit more than 5 seconds. So let's just see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's only set value. So that's our recorded values. Fourier transform is now going to be processed on these. So let's see. If you want the Fourier transform, Mathematically, remember it's going to look something like this. You get a formula for it. We're going to discuss it now. Now we can also calibrate the frequency axis. There is the absolute value. Again, how do we do it? If you don't want to do it mathematically in mathematical software, you can do it in LabVIEW. How do we do it? Express, signal analysis, spectral analysis. So here we're just going to say RMS, linear, and none. The handing is nice functions. It's not pure um, Fourier transform. It actually makes a better, a better window function. Again, you can Google this. Make you can see how this window functions will give you a better indication of what frequencies there are. But for now, I'm just trying to do the base Fourier transform. So RMS. I'm going to keep it linear. I'm going to change that to dB nano just to see what's happening. So. It's taking 1024 values and it's going to calculate what's happening there. We need another graph. Graph, place the graph there. Let's call instead of waveform 2, we'll call it the frequency 1. Instead of that waveform graph, we're going to call this time. So we're starting to work in the time domain and frequency domain now. And this is just for analysis. This is no control yet. This is just to see what is happening. Let's see what's happening after five seconds. 
you're gonna get a value there. Can you see it's not calibrated? Now, this Fourier transform kind of already knows there is 1024 cycles. It's already dividing it by 1024. Mathematically, that normally doesn't happen. So to calibrate it, you have to physically take your sample, times it with a frequency, uh, times your sample rate, divide by n, divide by 1000, and 24 in this case, but by now it's already dividing, uh, LabVIEW is already dividing by the uh, 1024, so we just need to multiply that with FS, and what is our FS, our sample rate? Remember one over that will give you a sample rate, so that would be 200, properties, scaling factor, and multiply with 200. What do we see here? Here we see we go from zero, 200. There's a spike at 50. Let me just zoom in here a bit. And make that 70. There is a spike at 50. We know we have two frequencies now. We have a frequency of 50 and we have a frequency of 2. So the other one should be there too somewhere. So let's just make this 10 and then there by 2 somewhere. Oh, did I change it? Sorry. Remember I made it slower. Let's make that 2 again. We have a 2 hertz one, we had a 50 hertz, two sine waves, so 50 hertz and a 2 hertz one. If we add it together, it's going to auto calibrate this one, as you just seen. Five seconds have to wait, there we go. We've got that spike at 50, we've got the spike at 2. We have an offset there as well, remember this is at an offset. That's why there is a very DC component there at the beginning. Don't worry too much about it now. Um, can you see that spike tells you about how big the low frequency is? This spike can see how low the high frequency is. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Instead of amplitude 10, the high frequency one, I'm making it, let's say, amplitude of 2. Smaller component of noise. When I run it again, that spike should go smaller now because there's a smaller noise component. It should see, see there's smaller. Can you see it's very low at the moment. But just for simulation purposes now, just to see what is happening. Let's make it bigger, 20. It's almost the same as the low frequency one. Can you see that needle is crazy now? Can you see how noisy our signal is? Can you see that my noise signal is as big as my information signal? Just to test something else, you can now add a third frequency if you want. Just copy pasting that one, putting another plus sign, just to show how the frequency component works. Add this to this and then the answer to that one. So we've got three frequencies. This I'm going to change to, let's say, 17. And make it also 10 maybe. So we've got a 2, a 50 and a 70. If I run it now, after 5 seconds, there should be 3 spikes a 2, a 50, and a 70. So, in real life, you kind of know what your factory machine is supposed to give. You know roughly what frequency they are. If you want to see what noise factors they are, you can do a Fourier transform, and it will show you there's a spike there, there's a spike there. So if you want to simulate, if you want to generate that type of signal, you have to add so many together to make that signal. If not, you remember this part of the code is where we kind of generate now a signal. But in real life, what we, you'll do, you'll take a Fourier transform. Instead of that value coming from there, it's going to come from your analog pin. You take a thousand samples, maybe. You record it at a certain time, uh, at a certain sample frequency. You see what's happening, what issues do we have, and then we're going to design a filter for that specific. So in the next step, we're going to discuss filters.